Picture a superhero movie following a young, awkward, quippy main character in a wider cinematic universe featuring a returning mentor who turns to a risky superpower to fix some issues within their personal life. However, things go wrong resulting in multiverse shenanigans with villains and heroes returning from past films that we never thought we'd see again. There are lots of similarities between Spider-Man No Way Home and The Flash. So let's look at these a little deeper and talk about which one I think is the more effective movie. This is The Flash versus Spider-Man No Way Home. Hello and welcome to Cinemaze. If you're new here, consider pressing subscribe to see more videos like this. It's pretty popular to hate on The Flash and in general, it received a mixed reception with some people really enjoying its personal story and the reintroduction of Michael Keaton as Batman. While others criticize its awful CGI, its lead actor, its hollow cameos and messy third act. Spider-Man No Way Home on the other hand is generally more beloved, whether that's financially, critically or from the fans. But it is a movie which gets a level of criticism too, particularly from people believing it relies too much on nostalgia and fans service. However, personally, I enjoyed both these films quite a bit, and I think a lot of the criticisms both of these movies get are a bit unfair considering the mammoth task they were both trying to achieve. I think these movies actually succeed and fail in opposite areas, what one does well the other one does not and vice versa. And for me, it's really a tale of two halves, with one having a much stronger introduction and first act, while the other has a much more effective second half and satisfying conclusion. And it's that stronger ending and final arcs and message that makes me enjoy one of these films more than the other. Let's start by looking at the first act of both of these films and we'll start with Spider-Man No Way Home. Despite rushing over the really intriguing ending setup in Far From Home, I do think the first 10 to 15 minutes of No Way Home are pretty good, building up a nice sense of momentum and the impact of Peter's identity being revealed on his life. We also get Charlie Cox as Daredevil, which is always great to see and it's crazy that this movie has so many things going on that we often forget to mention that this film reintroduced us to Daredevil. This whole identity thing feels like it could have been a movie on its own. That said, I can understand why this movie skims over that, especially when you consider the position that the Spider-Man character and his rights were in when this movie was being made. Once we get the identity stuff out of the way and we have caught up with our characters, I feel like this movie slows down quite a bit and rushes to get us to the multiverse, because clearly that is the story that they wanted to tell here and they wanted to get to the multiverse as quickly as possible. However, it's the way that they do it that I think really holds this movie back, because I think the film does a good enough job of making us understand the impact of the identity reveal on Peter, Aunt May and his friends, but I don't think it does enough to justify the way that Peter and Doctor Strange decide to make everyone forget. If you just look at it very simply, Doctor Strange decides to wipe the memory of everyone in the world without telling the parameters of the spell to Peter Parker. And Peter asked him to do this before even talking to college admissions. And the spell goes wrong because Peter was not told the rules of the spell before it was cast. We know both these characters are super smart and it just feels dumb on both of their parts. They are both smarter than this and they should have discussed this in more detail before brainwashing the entire world. Like I said, I understand why Peter wanted everyone to forget, but I don't think the decisions make sense for either of these characters. And so the inciting incident for setting up the whole whole film, the spell going wrong feels forced and it leads to a very weak setup for the entire movie. Despite handling the multiverse and the fan service effectively, the method we use to get there is very weak. And it feels like with a slightly stronger script, they could have made this far more believable. If Peter had known all the parameters of the spell and then backed out last minute because he didn't want to lose his loved ones but it was too late and messed up the spell like in the comics, it would have been far more believable. Or if there was a sense of time pressure, Peter's life was falling apart so much that Doctor Strange had to rush the spell without telling him the rules to fix things quickly. For example, if there was an angry mob who hated Spider-Man following him around and rallying outside the sanctum, then we would understand why they had to rush the decision. But instead they don't communicate properly and then the spell goes wrong Wrong, and then we find out Peter could have just talked to college admissions anyway. So even the film admits this was a dumb decision. So it leads to a very weak setup. Let's compare this to The Flash. Very quickly and effectively, we learn everything we need to know about this version of Barry Allen and how he isn't in a good place in life. Yes, he's a superhero and he works for the Justice League and he has immense power, but he's only used for simple missions. He's always late for a job that he's not even treated well in and he only works in that job to try to help his dad who's in prison. He's still struggling with the loss of his mother. A flashback tells us about his relationship with both his parents and proves that his dad is innocent, making us understand Barry's plight. Overcome by emotion, he discovers he can travel time and talks to Bruce Wayne about it, who warns him and us, the audience, of its dangers. However, Barry decides to do it anyway. In this film, the setup is not done by accident, but an active decision that our character makes in a moment of weakness. That is a far more compelling setup than Spider-Man talking too much during a spell that he should have known more about before agreeing.
agreeing to it. Now, I'm not saying the first act of The Flash is perfect. It certainly has its issues like a calorie mechanic, which gets completely forgotten about by the rest of the film, bad CGI and babies in microwaves. But overall, it's effective at setting up the inciting incident for the film in a way that is sympathetic and relatable to the audience by understanding Barry's life situation in a very relatable way and having him make a decision that you can understand that doesn't feel forced. Then we get to the middle act of these films and I think both these movies do a good job here as we start to have fun with the multiverse. No Way Home really starts to pick up as it feels like we're finally getting to the movie that they actually wanted to make. While The Flash is focused on exploring the mysteries of this new DCEU. Both movies follow our leads as they try to fix the mess that they have caused with Peter rounding up the villains who accidentally got brought to his world and The Flash giving his past self powers and wanting to fix the Zod situation. If I had to criticise this section of The Flash it would be that it does kind of feel like a series of unconnected events that don't and then do happen one after another. Past Barry gets his powers then main Barry loses them. We need to find Batman we immediately find him. Batman doesn't want to help he then immediately decides to help. We can't find Superman we found him oh it's Supergirl but she doesn't want to help then she does want to help. Barry fails to get his powers back then he immediately gets his powers back. Whereas I think No Way Home flows a bit more naturally between each scene of catching the villains. But like I said, I do enjoy both sections of this movie and they have emotion and heart in there to make them enjoyable and relatable. We see Barry reunite with his mum and see how different his life is without her through his past more annoying self. Part of the reason I wasn't that interested in The Flash was because of Ezra Miller and their personal life. But I have to say I do enjoy Miller's performance here and I think the two Barry dynamic works really well. And then looking at No Way Home it has this emotion as Peter is trying to rectify his mistake. We feel his fantastic friendship with Ned and MJ. We learn more about the villains and look at them through a more sympathetic lens. It's really after Spider-Man's fight with Doctor Strange that No Way Home takes it to the next level. Up to this point in time, both our heroes have been quite selfish. Sure, they save a few people here and there, but the main decisions they have been making have been for themselves. And even when they try to fix it, it's been for personal reasons. But No Way Home has been laying small ideas of responsibility over Peter's journey. When the spell fails, he goes to the college admissions to plead his friend's case, not his. And he fixes the damage caused by Electro, even though I'm pretty sure all those webs are going to dissolve again in a few hours. And he treats Norman like a person, not a villain. Then, of course, the fulcrum point, when he has the chance to send the villains back to their death, he chooses not to, and the direction of his story really starts to shift. This compares to The Flash, who, yes, he is trying to save the alternate universe, but not because he's fixing his mistakes or because it's the right thing to do, but because it's the one where his mum lives. And that's fine, that's what this whole movie has been about. But when we conclude this movie, I think there is a lack of consequence on Barry himself, and he actually gets rewarded for his strange decisions throughout this film. The third act of The Flash is a total mess. It has awful CGI in just the worst possible setting, a big flat CGI wasteland. It looks like they just loaded up Minecraft and set the world to super flat. It has time travel rules which make no sense and contradict the rules set up within this film itself. And most importantly, it fails the story and the established themes. Let's take out the multiverse and the cameos and all the dressing and just look at the story and Barry's arc very simply. Barry misses his mum and so he uses his power to bring her back. Okay, good, this is emotional and sympathetic. By the end of the film, he realizes this is bad and he has to undo his action. Okay, good, that should be the lesson here. We then get a really effective final moment between the two, perfect. Then Barry ends up back with how things were in his original universe. Okay, the movie's done right, there was no consequence to his actions, but he learned a lesson across the film, fine. Oh, but it's not the end of the film. We then find out that he actually creates new evidence for his dad and his dad manages to get out of jail. So he actually benefits from time traveling what? Like that completely defeats the message of this film, to not mess with time travel and to move on from your past, literally like Bruce Wayne tells Barry in the film. But he benefits from messing with time, it's crazy, what's the message here? Don't mess with time travel because it's bad, but maybe you can do it just a little bit because that's alright. What were they thinking? I can understand this if there was another level of consequence to the actions, but what were the consequences here? A bunch of people potentially died in a universe that may or may not exist anymore and that George Clooney is now Batman, but Barry still got what he wanted. He saved his dad and we're never going to see this universe again so who Batman is doesn't mean anything. It's so frustrating because they almost had it with this very personal and emotional story of accepting a loss but they completely ruin it by making Barry benefit from the impact of the film. 
So while he learns to let his mum go, does he really learn a lesson of not messing with time? Again, let's do this with No Way Home, just looking at it very simply. Peter's life is a mess because of his identity being revealed and this is impacting everyone he knows. Okay, cool. Peter goes to Doctor Strange and asks for a spell so everyone will forget who he is and they don't talk about this any further. Okay, not the best setup. The spell then goes wrong and Peter has to track down the people who appeared in his universe as he takes responsibility for his actions. Okay, that's getting better and it's setting up themes of responsibility. Peter learns that the guys will die if he sends them back home and he wants to help them instead. Even better, that's very Spider-Man. This goes wrong and it results in his aunt dying. But Peter doesn't want to give up and he doesn't want her to die in vain so he continues to try to help the villains. Very emotional, very Spider-Man again. And then in order to save everyone, Peter has to sacrifice his identity and no one will remember who he is. Perfect. The story works so much better because there are actually consequences of the actions of our lead hero. In a way, Peter actually gets what he wanted at the start of the film. Everyone forgets his identity, but it comes with consequence. In trying to fix his life, he actually makes it worse by losing his aunt and his identity. But in doing so, he learns a lesson of responsibility. That is a far more effective arc and the movie actually has a message. And so while The Flash may have the more effective emotional and personal setup for the movie, No Way Home has a far more effective emotional and personal conclusion to the story which has consequence and a clear message. When people say No Way Home only works because of its fan service and its cameos, point them to Peter's arc in this film because even without the multiverse, he still has a very effective story across the entire film. But let's talk a bit more about the cameos and fan service. Right off the bat, it's of course great to see Michael Keaton, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield back as their respective superheroes and their inclusions in both films really helps to elevate both movies. Both movies actually take a different approach to these returning characters, with No Way Home telling us very little about what has happened since we last saw them. The only things we find out is that Tobey Maguire is still trying to make things work with MJ and Andrew Garfield went down a dark path. Other than that we don't really hear anything else about what has happened in these characters lives. We don't know about any new villains or marriage or children or Aunt May or anything that has progressed in their stories which I don't think is a bad thing. I think it's exciting to think of the adventures that these characters might have gone on. However Michael Keaton's reappearance takes a different approach where we have very little reference to any of his past films or villains but instead we learn more about what his character has been up to since we last saw him. There's no longer any crime in Gotham so he's quit being Batman Man, he's lost his Alfred and he's become an even weirder hermit and recluse than his character already was. While I wasn't keen on this weird hermit introduction, I do like that they allowed his character to grow in between films. I don't think either of these approaches are bad. While I enjoyed seeing all of these characters again and they all gave fantastic performances, I do think the Spider-Men appearing had a better impact on the plot. How Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield could give advice to Tom Holland's Peter, how Garfield was able to have his moment of redemption for Gwen and how Tobey was able to stop Tom Holland from going down a darker path and they were able to cure their villains righting some of the wrongs from their past. You feel like all these Spideys influenced each other and it actually benefited all of the Spider-Men's stories. Michael Keaton's Batman felt like it had less of an impact directly on the plot. Yes the Flash was able to influence him into putting the suit back on but Michael Keaton's inclusion doesn't really impact the Flash's character especially when Ben Affleck had already given him advice and then Michael Keaton dies but we don't really know if he does or if that universe stops existing or if it gets re written. So it doesn't really feel like there's any kind of conclusion for his character. I understand that the ending of this film was changed and at some point did include Michael Keaton returning to the main universe showing that he did survive but in the film that we got his character just kind of dies and that's it. Are we now supposed to believe that is how the story for Michael Keaton's Batman from the 89 films ends? Was this even the same Batman from the 89 films or was this a variant who was in a different timeline more similar to the DCEU? Without question the inclusion of the villains were handled far better in Spider-Man No Way Home. Zod was almost non-existent in The Flash and really they brought Michael Shannon back for nothing. He just feels like he exists to fit into the DCEU timeline and I feel like they completely wasted his return. That compares to No Way Home where even the worst villain in that film felt fun to see again and the better ones were incredible. It gave Electro a chance to shine showing that there is an interesting character in there with a better script, giving that character a second chance and tying into one of the themes of the film which is second chances. It's always fantastic to see Alfred Molina as Doc Ock and we get to see him again as both the villain and the hero and of course the standout is Willem Dafoe's Goblin. He was always great in that first Spider-Man film. This film really adds an extra level to the character showing how Norman is trapped in his own body 
badly and dealing with him as a person with mental health issues rather than a crazy evil villain. And we get an incredible performance from Willem Dafoe where we can actually see his face, proving how much more he can add to this character when we let him emote. And of course, the cameos in The Flash where they bring back all the dead actors were just awful. Firstly, it felt so out of place. It didn't even fit in the film. The whole movie just pauses to point at these cameos. And bringing back dead actors is just weird and creepy, especially when some of these actors have a troubled history with these characters. I think it's one thing to reuse footage from these movies, but it's way worse to badly CGI them back to life. It's like near the end of No Way Home when the sky was opening up and you just get glimpses of silhouette of other Spider-Man characters. Sony and Marvel who co-created this project are two of the scummiest movie studios around and they were smart enough to not pause and force in a load of cameos from past films into the sky. Overall, I don't think The Flash or Spider-Man No Way Home are bad films. I actually enjoyed them both very much, but I do think that Spider-Man No Way Home is a far more successful and effective story. While I think The Flash has a very strong emotional and personal setup to the film where I sympathised with the characters and understood where he was coming from, I think it failed to have any strong consequences or messages to his journey. And in the end, the character actually benefits from messing with the multiverse, which just feels like the wrong message for the story. I think the story is best when it's telling a small personal story about Barry coming to terms with the loss of his mother, which does have an effective conclusion. So I think the inclusion of Batman and Supergirl and the other multiverse aspects actually take away from it being a very personal tale. On the other hand, I think Spider-Man No Way Home has a much weaker setup. While I understand why Peter wants to fix his identity crisis, I don't think the decisions made and the mistakes that occurred were very compelling and it felt a bit forced to get to the multiverse stuff. However, when Peter starts on his arc of responsibility, trying to help others, losing his aunt and then losing his identity, and it all ends with a very compelling story and character arc, which I can forgive the weak introduction for. This very personal story is then complemented by the multiverse. Not only only servicing fans but introducing us to versions of Spider-Man who all influence each other and have their own arcs and conclusion. And overall, I think it's Tom Holland's Peter's more effective arc and message along with the more successful use of the multiverse characters which makes me prefer Spider-Man No Way Home over The Flash. Let me know what you thought of The Flash and No Way Home in the comments down below. This was a really fun video to make and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on Marvel, DC, Star Wars or anything else amazing going on in cinema right now. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.